So hello everyone, welcome to our new video. Today we are going to do a very important problem related to data structures which is first occurrence and along with that uh, we will also be doing last occurrence and the total number of occurrence for any element in a sorted array. Okay. So here we are actually going to use binary search. If you don't know what is binary search, I have given the link of the binary search video there at the top right corner at the i button you can go and watch the video first and then come back to this video okay because binary search is a very important searching algorithm as data structure point of view because it is a very powerful tool and it helps us in many different scenarios in many different array problems okay and not only in array problems many search problems which are related to binary search which are actually related to continuous numbers okay we will be doing further more problems in later videos so now let's stick here to first occurrence last occurrence and total number of occurrence okay in a sorted array suppose if i have an array of integers let's say 10 20 30 or let's say let's remove 20 here and give it here as 30 30 30 30 30 I have given here 70, 80 and 90. These are the numbers here in the array and it should be sorted, okay? Because it is not going to work if the array is not sorted. And 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So here we have this 9 elements and the indexes are from 0 to 8 here, okay? Now, suppose if I have the target element here as 30, I have the target element 30. Now I want to find out that where do I have the first occurrence. So where do we have the first occurrence here? We have the first occurrence of 30 here at index 1. Where do we have the last occurrence of 30 here? So here we have 30 at the index 5, right? Now what are the total number of occurrences of 30 here? There are total 5 number of occurrences. So how are we going to do it? Normally if we do using linear search operation, I will start from the first index from the left hand side. Is the first element 30? No. Is the second element 30? Yes it is. So I will give the first occurrence as 1. Second, uh, the last occurrence. If I start from the right hand side, so I will check here. Is this 30? No. Is the number at the index 7 30? No. At the, the number at the index 6, it is also not 30. Then the number at the index 5, it is 30. So the first, uh, sorry, uh, so the last occurrence we got here at index 5. Done. This is how we are going to do in linear search. Now, what if the target element is here as 90? If I do linear search, I have to start from here and I have to go to the last. This is the worst case. Now here comes the thing about the time complexity. It will be n. Whatever be the size of the array, O of n will be the time complexity of this problem here, right? So now, can we do it in a more better way? Yes, we can do it with less number of operations. We will be using here binary search. You might be thinking that how are we going to use binary search here. And you know that if you are going to use binary search here, the time complexity will reduce to O log of n here, right? Just look here, how are we going to solve this problem? So here, how do we apply binary search? First, we have a start index here. I have considered S as the start index, okay? Which will be storing here as 0. N index we have here as 8. Done. Now we are going to find the mid element. That what we did in binary search. So here, I have taken a mid. If I find out the mid, I will get here the result as mid I will get here as 4. So here I will check at the index 4. Is it 30? Yes, it is 30. Right now we are only focusing on the first occurrence. Okay, right now we are focusing only on the first occurrence as of now. So we got here as 30. So 30, we found it here. Now can we return here as 30? No, we cannot. We are not finding 30 here. We are not performing the regular binary search. We have to find the first occurrence. The first occurrence is here at index 1. But we also have there at 30. So we are not going to return this, right? So here the value is found, but the first occurrence is not found here. So in this case, what are we going to do here? 30 is here. Okay, we had to find 30. 30 is here. So where will be the first occurrence now? It is clear that it will be on the left. But what if this is the first element? 
What if this is the first element, then we have to return 4. So here what we will do, here we will be taking a answer variable. Okay, we will be taking an answer variable and by default it will be storing the index as minus 1 in case the value is not found in the array. So here what we will do as of now we will be storing there as 4 because we have found the value at the 4th index. So, so here this answer variable here it becomes as 4 done. Now we have to go on the left while going on the left what we did we decrease the end as mid minus 1. So end I will decrease here as mid minus 1. So here it becomes as 3 clear. Now again I will find the mid index. The mid now changes as 1, 0 plus 3 divided by 2 becomes 1, right? So here is 1. I will check here at the index 1. Do we have a 30 here? Yes, we have a 30. Now, which one is smaller? 1 is smaller. So it is possible. So it is definitely 4 is not the first occurrence. 1 can be the first occurrence. So here answer is going to change again as 1. Answer here changes as 1. Clear? Now, if 30 is the, if we found 30 at the index 1, it is possible that 30 can be even before, right? So again, we will repeat the same thing. This end is now going to change as 1 minus 0. So it will become here as 0. So here we are going to check. What is the mid here? The mid here is 0. The mid here is 0. At the 0 index, what is the value? It is 10. So what is 10? 10 is smaller or greater than? 10 is smaller than 30. So if it is smaller than 30, then it, it is clear that 30 will be on the right side. In that case, what we were doing? We were moving on the right side. For moving on the right side, start was changed to mid plus 1. So this one became here as 1. So here, now if you find out, is it possible for applying the binary search? No, because the start index 1 has become greater than the end index 0. So we have to stop here and then we just have to return the answer index here as 1. This is it, how we are going to apply this problem. Everything is same as compared to binary search. Now if I compare with binary search, whenever we did not find the value, the value was not found. So what we were doing? From that mid index, we were going to the right. If the mid index is smaller than the target number, if not, then we were going on the left side if the mid value was greater than the target value, right? So this was done and when value was found, then we were directly returning the mid index. But here in this case, we don't have to return the mid index. Instead of returning the mid index, again we have to go on the left side and along with that, we have to store the index that where that value is found because that is not a guarantee that the number can that the number that we have found at the mid index is it the first occurrence or is it any other occurrence so we have to store that particular index and then we have to move on the left this is how the first occurrence we are going to find out here so now let's see the program how it can be done so here we have the array i have taken the same set of elements 10 uh, 530s we have then 70 80 and 90 I have taken the target element here as 30. I have the size in the variable n as 9 of the array. Then here I have the find first occurrence function. I am calling the find first occurrence function. Now I am passing the array, the size and the target. Now whatever it returns, if the answer index is minus 1, it means the element is not found. If it is not, then element is found at index, whatever be the index here, okay. So here, we have the function. Inside the function, I have taken answer variable which is by default as minus 1. I have the start index which is equal to 0. Then I have the end index which is equal to n minus 1. Done. And here we are finding the mid index. Okay. After doing that, this is the basic condition what we were applying in binary search. While s is less than equal to e, start is less than equal to n index. Done. Now inside this, first if the value is found. So if ERR of mid is equal to the target element, then what was I saying? That we have to store that index, right? In the answer variable. So I have stored that mid index in the answer variable. Then what we have to do? We have to go on the left side again. So I have written here as E equal to mid minus 1. Else if, if the target element is greater than ERR of mid, then we have to go on the right side, right? 
So in that case, what we were doing? The start index changes to mid plus one. Else the third one, if the value at the mid index, if it is smaller than the target index, then we have to go on the left side again. So here again we have written as e equal to mid minus one. So this is what we are going to do while finding the first occurrence. So as we know that at the every iteration we have to find out the mid index. So I have written this statement here again because this statement was outside the while loop. Okay. And then here we are returning the answer variable. Okay. Now, whatever if the value is not found at any point of time, then by default I am storing here as minus one. So this will be here returning as minus one. Okay. So this is it. Suppose if the size of the array is very large, if it is very large, let's say if it is ten thousand. So for ten thousand numbers, the linear search will be doing the same set of operations for ten thousand times in the worst case. But if using binary search. This program will be doing only log of n base 2. Here the size of n is 10,000. So log of 10,000 base 2 it is equal to 13 point some decimal value. So here it will be doing only 13 number of operations. So this is it. How we are going to solve this problem. So here now let's execute the program and see how it works. The target element here is 30. So it is giving me the correct result as element found at index 1. If I give any other value, let's say I have given the value here as 80. So for 80, 80 is found at the index 7. If I give any other value which is not there, let's say 50 is not there. So it is printing the result here as element not found. So now I will be covering the last occurrence and the total occurrence in the next video. So stay tuned and if you have any doubts then please give us a comment in the comment section we will definitely get back to you and if you have liked the video please click the like button and if you have not subscribed to our channel then please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you get a notification whenever we upload a new video. So thank you very much stay tuned.